Hello, chemists. So I wanted to go through another Alex problem. This one um, is about distinguishing accuracy and precision. We practice this a bit throughout the, the semester in Gen Chem 1 in lab, but your introduction to it occurs when you do the significant figures and measurement experiment at the beginning of the semester. Um, at any rate, so I'm going to go through some of the calculations, which is really what Alex um, expects you to be doing. So here's a problem. It's about a, a sauropod skull, but it could be any measurement, right? It doesn't matter what the measurement is. And the question is asking for me to determine which answer is the most accurate, which is the same thing as, um, I'm gonna write the rainbow pen here because this is important. Accurate means true. Which one is the most truthful measurement, the most correct measurement? Um, the other one is asking for precision Another way of saying that is significant digits, okay? So here we have, to, um, we have to do some calculations. When you are trying to figure out whether something is true or not, you have to use statistics. So we're gonna use a percent error calculation to evaluate accuracy. Uh, the formula for that is provided in a document we call Common Statistical Calculations, and it's actually the first one. So it's just the measured one versus the truth divided by the truth. Um, we recommend using absolute value. Other places won't. It, it depends on the purpose of your analysis. But anyway, that ratio um, gets the difference between observed and theoretical divided by theoretical gets multiplied by 100% to turn it into a percentage. And of course, ideally, a percent error would be as close to zero as possible. Okay, so when we say uh, the true measurement here, we're talking about this information in the question. They always give you the more, um, the, what we would call theoretical value. Um, in the question. So for each one of these, A, B, C, D, we will just calculate a percent error. I'll do one of them um, on the video and then just give you the answers for the others. You should pause in between and see if you can calculate the same information. Okay, so there's our difference between the actual in the notebook versus the truth. And then I'll take this whole thing, divide it, divide the difference by the true measurement, and then multiply that whole thing by 100%. So for A, that's a pretty big difference, actually. Um, so our, I would expect our percent error to be pretty high. OK. Um, Yeah, okay, so 9.75609.7561 is the answer from my calculator, but we wanna think about um, each step in terms of the correct sig figs. So in our difference, we have a 10th place that's limiting our precision. So that difference only has one significant digit, 0.4 on the top, zeros in the front are never significant. Um, then we divide by a digit that has three figures. So I'm only going to be allowed to keep one sig fig, right? Um, I'm going to keep a few extra, but I need to recognize that it's really 10% error because of significant digits. We have only one figure. So this one is significant and the zero is not. Um, okay, so then we're going to finish the rest of these calculations doing the same way and compare them. Okay, so I've gone ahead and figured out those answers. I wanna, I just wanna point out briefly that when I did, when I did D, I had to use a little bit of assumption on it. So we have a range of correct answers. Um, in order to do this calculation, I've gotta pick the average of that range. So I just add the two together. Um, not grams, that would be kilograms. Uh, and divide by two, and we get an average of 3.9 as the correct sort of middle ground of that range. That I plug in and complete the calculation 
to figure out how much error there is. And I did not use absolute values on this because Alex doesn't, so I'm just gonna go with that. Um, it's a good thing they're not asking us for the, um, to rank these from least to most accurate because I would have, I would, I would not be able to choose between C and D. They are equally um, accurate answers. Just one is up above the reading and one is down. That's the difference between them. All right, so the most accurate um, answer is going to have the lowest percent error. So we're going to pick B in this example as the, the most accurate. Um, now, to, to evaluate precision, we are going to need to, um, we're going to need to do a little bit of thinking about significant digits. So I'm going to do the work for precision in green so it's different. So when I have a reading like this, without uncertainty, that's the part that says plus or minus, I have to determine the uncertainty. And we always assume that the last figure written down is the estimated value. And we're going to assume that that value could be one higher or one lower than it is right now. That's uncertainty. So plus or minus here is going to be 0.1 because the place value that is uncertain is the tenths place. And since we don't have any other uncertainty written, we'll just assume it goes up by one and down by one. Then um, that would be one kg. The next one is already written in that format, so I don't need to change anything. I can compare them directly. The letter C is written as a percentage. I'm going to convert that so that it matches the format of A and B. You could do it the other way. You could make everything into a percent. It doesn't matter, but they all have to have the same type of uncertainty for me to be able to compare them. I want to compare apples to apples, not kilograms to percentages. Okay, so in order to do it, we will take this 0.5 and multiply 0.5% and multiply it by the, the amount of the measurement. Now, really, um, the percentage is mucking things up a bit. So I, I'm going to think of it as 0.5 out of 100. So it's no longer a percentage. And I'll be multiplying that by the, the measurement that gets rid of the percentage sign because percentages always means just out of 100 parts per 100. And so our answer here is 0 0.0215 kilograms from the calculator. Um, that only has one significant digit. Nope, I'm sorry, two, because there's two, the five and the zero. So we'll keep the two and the one. So our error becomes plus or minus 0 0.022 kilograms. And then for this one, again, we have a range. So the average of that from the last calculation was 3.9 kilograms um, right there. And our uncertainty is the difference between that measurement and the low and that measurement and the high. So uncertainty, when we write plus or minus, what, what we're saying is that really the answer lies in between some values. Um, in this case, the range is indicated as 3.7 to 4.1. Our average we found at 3.9. These are all kilograms, by the way. So the gap between the lowest value possible is 0.2, and the highest value is also 0.2. Okay? So it'd be like, from the average, I subtract 0.2 to get to the low, and I add 0.2 to get to the high. That's what the plus or minus means. So when we say 4.5 plus or minus 0.1, we're saying that the value might be as low as 4.4, but it might also be as high as 4.6, okay? So that's, that's what the uncertainty precision indication tells us. All right, so going back to this problem, if my um, range is 
down 0.2 to the lowest and up 0.2, then our uncertainty here is 0 0.2. And so in, the, in order to pick the most precise measurement, we want the lowest uncertainty. Okay, so 0.1 is bigger than 0.04. So B is more precise than A. Um, 0.04 is bigger than 0.02. So B is bigger than C. And so then 0.2 is bigger than 0.02. So the best answer to choose here is going to be C. Okay, so a lot of people get accuracy and, and precision confused. It's important to remember if you're talking about uncertainty, if you're talking about the number of significant digits, in other words, that's precision. And you want sort of the lowest gap, the lowest range in your uncertainty in order to be the most precise. Accuracy, on the other hand, is comparing to the correct or true value. In this case, the problem tells us Every time Alex gives us one of these questions, it's gonna tell us what the correct value is. But then we have to do a percent error calculation in order to, to find the lowest percent error. That's the most accurate. 